Hello everyone, and welcome to the 39th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can use object subscripting in the literals syntax that we learned about in the last tutorial, and also how we can use a few features that were added to Objective-C classes. So anyway, that's what uh, the plan is for this tutorial. It requires Xcode 4.4 as well as Lion or Mountain Lion to run it. So anyway, we'll start out by making an NS array here. We we'll use our nice new syntax for that. So we'll create a dog. And then we will create a Yoda. And, you know, we'll just go ahead and NS log this. So present that sign, array. And for those of you who were wondering in the last tutorial when I used type log, um, I'll have another tutorial up for that in the future. Uh, but anyway. Just, that's just a side note. I'll show you how you can do the text expansions. But anyway, we'll keep going here. Um, NS dictionary, we'll add something to key one. And we'll make uh, key two. That is map to other thing. All right. And just as another side note for dictionaries, if you want them to look a little nicer, if you have a lot of objects, it can be useful to align them, uh, you know, align the colons together, and then you can see the keys to their values uh, pretty clearly. And that's, you know, the whole point of Objective-C is that everything is very readable. Anyway, we'll keep going here and log this dictionary. And we'll run that. And eventually it will compile. Do, 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 do. I don't know, sometimes it takes no time at all, and then others it just takes forever. But anyway, here we go. We've got our dog and Yoda, and then key one with something, and key two with other thing. That's great. So, with that, um, there's a few new other features, though, that are brought into the Objective C literal syntax that we can use and it's known as subscripting so it basically works the same way or looks very similar to when you're using c arrays so if i wanted to use a c array and access it, the object at index zero i could say array zero and therefore that would give me the object that's at index zero and i can do the same thing in objective c where i would just say using you know methods an array object for index or I think it's object at index at index and then I just say zero and let me just make sure that I got it right I'm getting confused with my dictionaries and my arrays but anyway uh, array object at index zero and that will give me the the, you know the in the object at index zero it's pretty self-explanatory but um, the new way that we can do this with the literal syntax is just put the square brackets at the end of the object and then just put in the index that we want between them and again this works the exact same way like C arrays do if you're using a C array this is exactly how you would try to get it but it's important to know that they're not the same thing now I can do the same thing with dictionaries though, which is pretty neat. I can say dictionary, just pass in the key that I want. So if I want to get the object for key two, and just put the key two in between the brackets like so. And this would be similar to dict object for key. And I would just pass in the key, which would be key two. And that would, you know, get me other thing. So I can go ahead and run this here just to show you what it does. And as you can see, I get dog, which is my first element there, or the zeroth object at the zeroth index. And then the other thing is just map to key two, which is nice. Now, um, let's, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory, but there's a few neat things you can do with mutable versions of each of these. So if I want to make a mutable array, say array gets I'll make an NS mutable array it's important to note that the literal syntax creates an NS array not a mutable array so you have to make you know a mutable array for this and you could either get a mutable copy of the array you make or make it this way as well it's kind of up to you I guess but I think this makes it a little more explicit that you're making an NS mutable array and um, we'll just add our objects in here so dog 
and Yoda. Now, if I wanted to replace, let's say I want to replace the dog with Luke. So I could use array and use the subscript, subscripting uh, square brackets at the end, and just put in the index that I want to change. So I'll say I'm going to change array in, uh, the object at index 0, and I'm going to change that to Luke. And so Luke and Yoda can learn the ways of the Force. But the important part here is that you're uh, basically this is equivalent to using um, if I wanted to do array replace object at index and then I'd pass in index 0 with object and I would pass in Luke. So basically this line of code is equivalent to this line of code and you can see that obviously this is fairly simple I and mean, not very long anyway but if you prefer this way again if you prefer any of these methods over the you know subscripting or um, literal syntax way of doing things then uh, you can feel free to use this it doesn't it's totally up to you so you should understand how both ways work though because again you might see it somewhere in the wild one day or you'll write it yourself and it's good to understand um, the similarities because they're identical anyway we'll keep going with this and I'll log my array and you can see that since we created a mutable array and I changed the index at zero and um, we get Luke and Yoda so that's very nice now I can even do the same thing for a dictionary so if I make an NS mutable dictionary and NS mutable dictionary dictionary with dictionary and oops that was a mess go back up there uh, I want key one I'm just gonna make one thing for this instead of making two keys uh, just to make it simple so just make one key with the value of something alright so now I've made an NS mutable dictionary and I can now change the contents of that dictionary so I can do the same thing like I did before just put the square brackets at the end and I just put in the key that I want to change so I can say key one and I want to change that to new thing and there we go so this would be equivalent to going uh, dictionary and then uh, set object new thing for key and key one and that would be the equivalent to what we have here so uh, as you can see you can pick which one you want to use it's basically up to you but um, it's just showing you the two different ways uh, now with the literal syntax that we can do it differently all right and if I wanted to log my dictionary now you can see the change that was made I can see now that key one is now mapped to new thing so that's pretty neat. I now, you know, just changed it by uh, this very easy subscripting sort of syntax. Now I can even do something uh, pretty neat with mutable dictionaries. If you want to add a new object, I could just say key two. So I can, uh, it's doing the same thing. It's basically just going to add in a new key and a new object. So I'm going to say make a new key, call it key two, and then I will set it to be new thing. And what this will do is when you see we run it that it's going to make an entirely new key called key 2 and it's going to assign it to new thing with whatever value we set there so that's another neat thing that you can do uh, with dictionaries but feel free to do whatever you want all right so that's uh that basically sums up what i was going to cover with uh subscripting and the literal syntax you can look up the other things that you can do with it there's a few things that you can do with NS number that are uh, interesting, but anyway, that's um, what I'm going to finish off with with literals. So, um, next thing that I want to talk about is Objective C classes, and there's a few changes to this as well. So, if I use, I'm just going to create our class, make it NS object, and we'll add it to my project. And if I go to my header file now, um, there's a few changes that were made to Objective C classes. So by default now, Objective-C classes, any properties that you make will be synthesized automatically. So we don't actually have to say at sign synthesize anymore. And I'm going to show you what they've actually set it to be. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, basically we have, uh, if I make a property here, I'll call it int, and we'll call it cool int. 
And if I flip over to our implementation here, usually I'd say synthesize, cool int, and then I'd say underscore cool int, as you've seen in the past few tutorials anyway. And this is now the new default for an automatically synthesized property. So by default now, I don't even have to include the synthesized method, my property, or the synthesized, uh, uh, whatever, attribute, I can't even think of what it is, but uh, I just have to say, at sign property, int, cool int, and now by default, it's automatically synthesized for me, and in this same format. So I will get the instance variable called underscore cool int, and I will get just the, I can use self.coolint or set coolint, you know, to actually change the value. So I no longer need this synthesize, but it's important to know that you do get the backing instance variable to be the underscore. And that's kind of why I changed it a while back in the tutorials and was using the underscore uh, because it is now the default. So anyway, that is that. So no longer do we have to write synthesize, we now are automatically synthesizing the properties in Objective-C classes, and they're synthesized just like I showed you there, by default. All right, so, and uh, that's basically all I had to show for that. Now, the next interesting part is to do with private methods. So, if I make a method, and I call it method A, and method A calls another method. So I could say self uh, method B. All right, and I could write my other one down here, void method B. And then I could just, you know, NS log something, and I'll just say hi. Okay, so this looks good, and it's compiling fine in Xcode 4.4, but it would not have compiled fine in Xcode 4.3. And the reason for this is because the compiler has changed in um, Xcode 4.4 to now look at the entire class that you have for all the methods. And then it basically provides a list of methods like we usually do before. Now, you might be still wondering, what the heck, did, why does this matter? This doesn't look impressive at all. Well, the reason that this is um, this would have never worked in previous versions of Xcode or Objective-C anything is because um, s Basically, method B to method A, if, if I'm method A and I'm going through this and I see self method B, I make sure that there's some kind of declaration ahead of time that method B exists. I'd either have to declare that in my interface or a class extension, which I showed you in another tutorial where you can add your private methods to your class. And you'd usually do that by saying that's an interface, okay, a class name, and then put private methods in here, and then you'd add the list of private methods that you want right there. And that is kind of a pain in the butt if you're working with private methods because then you got to list them all out. And it's a lot easier not to write them at all. So Apple in Xcode 4.4 decided, well, the compiler will now look at your entire class and analyze which uh, methods there are in your class. So previous versions of this, if I ever called self method B before method B was ever called or existed, then this would be a compiler error, and it would basically say, well, method B um, doesn't exist because you know you didn't declare it yet. And usually in past versions, if you wanted to get around this, you could declare it like this. And But the, the point is, it's just kind of annoying because you got to figure out the order of all the methods to make sure that they work, or you declare them in either an interface or the interface or our uh, class extension. But the nice thing is in Xcode 4.4 and later, that this no longer matters the order of your private methods. You can just put whatever methods you want in your implementation and uh, other methods will be fine when they go to call method B, for example. So uh, you don't have to no longer, you no longer have to worry about the order of where your methods appear. Uh, if they're ahead or uh, before another method, it doesn't matter. The compiler will look to make sure what, or check to see what methods you have in your class. And if method B already exists in your class, it's not going to complain that method B doesn't exist. So anyway, uh, that's basically all I had to show you for uh, this set of tutorial, or this tutorial. And if you have any questions on any of the stuff I covered, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, and I will have more tutorials on the way. Uh, one coming up, of course, for that uh, type log thing that I showed in the last tutorial. I'll have one for that Xcode tip. And then uh, more, uh, more Coco tutorials in particular will be coming out as well. So anyway, I will see you in an upcoming tutorial.